Hello lovelies, TF Calm here, and I'm here to give you a great, great video today. But first, I have a warning for anyone who likes Starbucks and is under the age of 21. They now have an eggnog drink in both Frap, and I think they have it hot as well. If you are under 21, do not order this drink. It contains alcohol. I ordered it, um, not knowing, and... They didn't even card me. They just gave it to me. So, if you are under the age of 21 or 18 in some countries, do not order this. Um, unless, I guess, you want to get by with breaking the law. But, as far as I'm concerned, they did not card me and they did not inform me. They are in the wrong. It's not my wrong for ordering a drink that just sounded cool. Okay. So, Starbucks, work on that. And maybe other locations card, but mine did not. So, I mean... I didn't even get a small one. They gave me, like, a venti. So, yeah. Be careful there. Um, parents, watch out for your kids. Honestly, the drink's not even good. So you're not missing much. Kind of tastes like spoiled milk that's chunky and... Ugh. Sorry, Starbucks. Most of your drinks are really good at this one. Mm. So you're not missing anything other than, I guess, the alcohol content. So be careful there. Now, back to the concept of this video. Today marks the start of Trans Awareness Week. So I'm going to spend each of these videos talking about a trans issue or something about trans. Um, so for today's video, you may be wondering, what am I going to do? Well, I am going to show you something that many men, trans men, have to do, and that is binding. Um, now, a majority of the population it does not have to bind because they are cis, but for us trans individuals, I mean, it's pretty necessary, in my opinion. But you don't have to if you don't want to, I suppose. Um, I'll also add a bit about packing in there. Which is similar, you don't have to if you don't want to. I don't. But I can, tell you, I can teach you about that. So for right now, um, and YouTube can't get me on nudity because I will be wearing something. I'll be wearing my binder. So I'm going to dip, take these off so I can demonstrate a binder. Okay, I feel like really exposed right now. So a binder, there's many different types. Um, the type I have looks like a tank top, essentially, but cut in the middle. Um, it has little latches, like a bra latches, all the way down the side. And you can make it as tight or as loose as you want. Tighter, of course, better. Now a binder, for those who do not know, compresses the chest to make um, it appear that you have a flat chest. Um, so basically it hides boobs. Um, some men have to wear them, actually. Um, there are some disorders, um, physical illnesses and stuff that make them grow female breasts. And some men are just large and they choose to wear them. That works. But for trans, it's essentially a lifestyle. Now, there are some that go all the way down. Um, there are some that are strapless. Um, they come in all colors and shapes and sizes. I choose white because I like wearing white shirts. And I really couldn't do that without a white undershirt, of course. Um, uh, so essentially, you tighten them up. Um, I cannot show you fully, but you slide it on. And this has latches only on one side. So you slide it over your head and arm and then latch it. So it's essentially like a tank top, how you put it on, except for you latch the side. So cool, cool. Now, um, I'm going to get in the topic of packing. As I said before, I do not pack. I don't. But, oh, many trans do. And so, I'm going to have to show you this. Yes, I am wearing boxers. Do not turn away. I am wearing clothes, okay? See? I'm wearing clothes. Okay. Jeez. 
Oh, if I don't fall over. I will sh demonstrate what packing is. Since I do not do it, I will have to do it here for you guys. Packing is essentially placing a fake penis in your parts. Um, some people use a sock or a cloth or anything like that to make it appear as if they have a bulge, essentially. Oh, jeez, what the hell was that? I don't know what that it was, but this is like a really loud bang all of a sudden. And remember, it's still a dangerous area right now for me, so even though it's Trans Awareness Week, I gotta be careful. So this is scary. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. And I have a washcloth. People can make as many as they want. Um, can make it as big as they want, I suppose. I'd fold it in half, roll it up. Essentially a shape. Put it in. And I mean, you can make it as small or as large as you want, but there you go. I'm sure the camera can't see it very well. There is your bulge. It's a pretty simple process, but of course you make sure it doesn't fall over and everything like that. As I said, I do not wear these. <laughs> so, um, there are the basics of binding and packing. Um, these are a thing trans people go through all their life. Um, now I'm going to put on my shirt. I'm feeling really exposed to you guys right now. Mm. Okay, I'm good now. I can leave my boxers on, you guys don't care. Um, so, the thing with binding. The number one rule, do not use Ace Bandages, or any of that brands. Um, medical wrap, essentially. Do not use it. Do not. It's one of the worst things in the world to do. Worst thing in the world. People wrap them around their chest to make it tight, like they would, you know, hurt ankle or something. But the issue here is it's designed to tighten every time there's movement, so that if you're ankle or something starts to swell, it'll tighten it back and basically keep it from swelling and getting infected and stuff. So it works with healing and stuff, things. That being said, if it's around your chest, every time you breathe, it'll tighten. Because it's a swelling. So keep tightening and tightening and tightening as your day goes by. It is not safe whatsoever. It will kill you. A lot of people do it, and I assume they made it alive, but it's insanely dangerous. Do not risk this. Ever. If you cannot afford a binder, then wear a lot of layers. But do not wrap with ace bandages ever. I went to a counselor who actually told me to do this. And so it makes you think that maybe there's not enough awareness in the community to not do this. So do not do this. Ever. Please don't. Please don't. Oh man. I worry about everyone who even mentions it as a joke. Just don't do this. Ever. No. Whew. So that being said, um, binders are layers. Um, binders are, of course, typically the preferred. But I guess it depends on where you live. Where I live, it's insanely hot. Our winter is um, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's our winter. So we don't really have the choice of layering. I mean, I am having to wear the binder underneath. But even though it's winter now, I am burning up. This is hot as can be. Which is why usually when I get home, I'll take off my binder after I record my videos. Sometimes you see my videos where it looks like I'm laying down. It's because I took off my binder already and I don't want to show the breast. Um, so binders are amazing. You need a good brand, of course. Um, my brand is actually in Chinese lettering, so I unfortunately do not know how to pronounce it but I've used uh, Underworks is a very good brand very expensive a very good brand um, there is something brothers to brothers I think is what it's called and it's a used binder thing so after people get surgery they donate their old binders or perhaps they gain more muscle mass so they can't fit into the old ones anymore and they donate them 
I actually donated two of mine very recently. Well, donated, I basically gave them to a friend of mine who um, could not afford his own. He had a binder, but it was very, very thin, didn't work very well. I gave him two of mine. Um, binders are great. But an important thing to remember with both packing and binding, infections are insanely common. The binding sweat will accumulate accumulate very quickly. So many people have actually put deodorant underneath their binder. I do not. I just kind of pull it out and air it a little bit every once in a while. Go in the bathroom every few hours or so and just kind of readjust it. Maybe take it off for a few seconds and put it back on. Take it off to wipe down the sweat or something. But they get very sweaty. That is true with packers as well. But the danger with packers is that um, any sweaty, infectiony thing down there, huge UTI problem. All sorts of infections and um, basically you'll be pretty embarrassed because it's inflamed and pain, it hurts to pee. I'm sorry guys, this is gross, but this is the truth. While you still have a female um, bladder, it will get infected if you do not be careful. So your sock, try to change it out every few hours, or a packer, or whatever it may be. Try to change it out every few hours, or do kind of like the binder thing, take it out and maybe clean it, put it back in. This is a lot harder to do if, um, if you are, of course, in public. Um, so my suggestion, bring a bunch of Germex and maybe some microfiber towels. Um, something that won't leave, like, lint and stuff. Uh, so you can... Spray it down, Germex, wipe it clean, and dry it off before putting it back in. That is my best suggestion to you. Um, just be careful out there, dudes. Um, there's a reason I don't do the packer. And while many starting out believe it is necessary, in my opinion, I've never had a guy glance at your junk. Maybe if you're dating a girl, she wants to reach over and grab something. But by that point, they should probably know. I don't know. I th it's all a preference, of course. But basically, whatever you choose to do, um, I believe binders are insanely common, whereas packers are not. But that could just be in my community and not around the world or anything. So binders are actually a lot cheaper than you would think. My original one, the full tank one, did not work very well at all. Um... And it was maybe two dollars on eBay. Um, thing to keep in mind that though is that they all stretch, unfortunately, throughout the years. Um, it says to hand wash them or wash with cold water and everything like that. I don't, so they do get ruined probably about three months or so. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, they probably last half a year. But essentially, you have to get new binders. So I like to keep an extra one on hand all the time. But another thing to remember, if you were on um, hormone replacement therapy, HRT, so if you were on testosterone shots and such, an important thing to remember there is that your shoulders will widen and your chest will shrink. So your old ones won't fit anymore. They'll seem really baggy because they're made with, because they had stretched out to your old chest size and they'll seem way too tight up here because your shoulders are broadened and they physically cannot stretch that much of course I often forget to keep my shoulders back because I'm so used to them being this size and now they're that size so it's another thing keep your shoulders back stand up strong believe it or not binders work way better if you stand up straight I for years always do kind of this so it's more baggy here and they couldn't really tell I'm always like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kind of keep my head down. So if they saw anything, it was just from the bagginess of the shirt. But that does not work at all. People just become concerned for your mental health. And, I mean, I was pretty depressed, so I'm glad they got concerned. But if you stand up straight, keep your shoulders back, it's clean. Now, an important thing to remember if you guys say, oh, that won't work for me. I was a D. I was a D cup. And some of you may not know what that is if you are a cis male watching this. A D cup, I think 
the equivalents they used when they described the cup sizes. There's this little website thing that compared them to fruit. I think they said it's about a grapefruit. It's essentially um, about this far out, uh, if you can't see this far out um, from my chest here. So it's very, very large. That's, that's all you really need to know. Um, they can weigh, geez, they can weigh like 10, 20 pounds. Very heavy, very large, but you can't tell that. Unfortunately, the thing to be reminding of is when you take the t hormones, your body fat displaces, so you get a bit of a tummy on you. I've been working out, so mine is mostly gone, but whatever the fat was in your chest has to move somewhere, which is unfortunate, but a part of life. So stomach, legs, wherever it can fit. And your hips, I've heard they do kind of shrink a little bit, but for the most part, your hips won't change. It's more of your body will change so much, it makes your hips not look as big, because your whole body is big. So that's great. Um, I think this is probably where I'm going to have to leave this video, because Dante's doing something stupid. Dante, what are you doing? Okay. And I have a lot of homework. So, I'm going to play this video here, guys. Hope you've learned something great about the trans community. And I'll keep on the trans theme all week. So, well... TFCOM signing off. Bye, guys. <laughs>